Welcome back to Core Finance. Let's talk to Connor Campbell. He's a financial analyst at Spreadex. Morning to you, Connor. Good morning. Let's have a quick rundown on three stocks that are reporting this week. Let's kick off with DFS Furniture. The mnemonic is DFS. Um, what are your thoughts here? What are the clients up to? Well, DFS has been ha had been having a fairly decent year. You know, you can see it, you know, climbed above that 280 mark earlier in the year. It's half year figures in March. They were pretty solid. Pre-tax profit was up 3.1%. Overall sales were up 6.8%. Even better, they announced a special dividend of 9.5p per share, hiked its interim dividend 5.7% to 3.7p per share. Everything was going very, very well. Cut to mid-June, it unleashed this sort of uh, profit warning out of nowhere. It had warned a few times, I think back in February and then in the end of March, that uh, Sterling's sort of sustained slump against, against the dollar was eating into its margins somewhat. But that was always a sort of slight addendum to what had been some very solid figures in both of its updates this year. Then out of nowhere, like I said, in June it unleashed that profit warning. It largely blamed the election and said that sort of the jitters around the election before and after had caused a material drop in customer orders. It was concerned about the uncertainty around the election and the macroeconomic environment. However, I will say, you know, the election result was on the 9th of June and that profit warning was on the 15th of June so I think there might be some more things going on at DFS and they've used that election to sort of cover things up really. Uh, now expecting core earnings for the year to come in at between 82 million and 87 million uh, that's way way lower than the 96 million that had been forecast yet cut to August cut to a few days ago and it announced it was buying Sophology which is one of its sort of faster growing rivals for 25 million pounds so things aren't too bad at DFS. Uh, that, that Sophology, I think it's got 37 stores across the country. Uh, full year, full year revenue is around 143 million. So it's not bad, not a bad acquisition. I think this week, going in, going into its uh, update on Thursday, investors are going to want want an up, a, a few more details on that purchase and see exactly where that money's coming from. Um, and they want to see signs that sort of the issues that it announced in June, they've maybe abated slightly. Obviously, June and July were a bit of a rough month for the UK in terms of, you know, staggering inflation, stagnant wage growth, the impact that had on retail sales. However, the pound has seen a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a climb against the dollar. Hopefully, that has eased some of its issues. Our clients have been buying around that 220 mark. I think partially on the Sophology news, suggesting that things aren't as bad as that huge fall in mid-June would suggest. And that, you know, because it's fallen that low, that it's got some room to climb. It was doing well before that announcement. If, if things aren't as bad, you know, if, it's a, if it points to core earnings being at the upper end of that 82 to 87 million mark, then it could see somewhat of recovery. Or, you know, even if it climbs to 240, that's still adding 20, 20p in value. And it's still a long way. You're still in the middle of where it fell on. And the, the clients? Cl yeah, like I said, clients supporting it around the 220 mark, buying around that level. So, so 220 being sort of a, a decent support area. Yeah. Um, and in terms of charts, finally, okay, a gap there to be filled to 250, and the old theory is gaps get filled at some point. Okay, let's move on swiftly to Chewy. TUI is the mnemonic, uh, currently trading at 1250, there or thereabouts, as of the close last night. Um, clear uptrends from the July lows. Um, what are you thinking here? Uh, well, it's had, a, it's had a pretty mixed year. Most of its updates this year have been fairly positive but investors ha haven't really taken to them. I think there's still concern over the drop-off in sort of holiday, holiday makers going to places like Turkey and North Africa. You know, both, both of those have been hit by terrorist attacks in recent years and that neither, neither has really recovered from, from where they were a few years ago. Obviously, those were huge money drivers, not only for Dewey, but, you know, Thomas Cook and, and companies like that, and that's been a continued issue for them. Uh, uh, it's, the company's also had issues in Northern Europe, especially the UK, you know, the, the pound situation against the euro, which is pretty dire, you know, I think it hit fresh 10-month lows yesterday. Um, that's really sort of, you know, keeping, keeping British holiday makers at home and, you know, causing them to avoid going to Europe. Uh, so summer sales were struggling a bit. It, it said it was still on track to deliver its 10 percent increase in full year earnings that it had mentioned earlier in the year. You know, and then like, like you're saying from that July low, it's seen a pretty spirited response yep. and it's climbed back to that 250 mark. However, our clients have been selling around that 250 mark, if only for the fact that each of its each of its sort of updates this year have been re received quite poorly. It, even if they've recovered in the weeks and months after, it's tended to see a dip afterwards and. Given how sharp that increase has been in the last six weeks, I think there is room for it to fall back towards e even just 225. So our clients have been selling around the 250 mark. Understood. Okay, let's move on to the final um, slide. Char sorry, Card Factory, stop code CARD. Again, an uptrend since the middle of July. 
updating the market this week, I yep, assume. Yeah, update on Thursday. Again, it'd been like, like a lot of uh, UK stocks, for the first five months of the year, it was having a very good month of the year, and then the election sort of hit, and, and then the, you know, things like inflation, second wage growth, those stories dominated in June and dragged a lot of, a lot of the homegrown stocks lower. But its figures are fairly solid. Four years back in March, Total sales were up 4.3%. Like for likes were only up 0.4%. And pre-tax profit did dip 1.1% due to low footfall and rising wages and things like that. However, its first quarter figures then in May. You can see it hit an 11-month high at the end of May. That was based on the 6.1% rise in underlying sales. It also said it would pay back any surplus cash towards the end of the year to investors. So obviously that was very attractive to investors. As mentioned, though, the you know, pre-election uh, pre jitters and the chaos of the actual result and then you know, things like inflation that dragged it back to a three-month low in mid-July, but then seen a pretty sharp recovery. I think because the fundamentals of Car Factory have been fairly solid throughout the year. It's uh, expanded into Ireland. As mentioned, it's got the, the repaying of surplus cash by the end of the year. Our clients have been buying around that 320 mark. I think they're happy with how Car Factory is doing. Any update to say that it sort of avoided the the concerns that plague the wider retail sector. Obviously, there, there are a few issues with Car Factory. It's a predominantly uh, high street store, and that always carries some yeah. risks at the moment. But it, it seems, you know, it's, it's fairly dominant in its sector, and if it can keep its, uh, keep its prices low, that's the key thing with Car Factory, compared to Clinton cards or even buying cards in supermarkets and stuff. For people that are buying, buying greetings cards and things like that, Card Factory is far, far, far cheaper than its competitors. And as long as it can keep that up and not let, you know, Sterling's wobbles uh, eat into those margins and force it to put its prices up, I think it should be okay going forwards. Connor Campbell, thank you very much indeed.